Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Get Tires. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to my life. Alright you guys, when we left off the other night, I was working on the nut on the Astrolabe 25. I've got this thing strung up and ready to roll. I still got some adjustments I need to make to the nut. So we're going to loosen these strings up, get these slots cut a little bit deeper, and if I discover that the strings are buried too deep down into the nut, then we'll pop the nut out. I have yet to glue this in, I think. Um, either way, we'll work this out. I will drop the top of this nut down just a little. If I have to do it with the file, that's what I'll do. Everything else is just as it should be. I don't want this guitar set up super slinky. Um, he wants it to feel somewhat like an acoustic, which is why I went for a medium high action. We also need to get our soldering done on the pickup. I need to sand the back cover which I've got right here with my oily fingerprints all over it. And we need to drill in the holes so we can get some screws popped in here and get this cover installed. There's been some scammers uh, posting on my YouTube channel claiming that you guys have won something from Sweet Tea Guitars. But if you click on that, it takes you to a separate YouTube channel and you will notice right away that there are no subscribers um, they have only been a member on YouTube for a couple of days. It's obviously a scam. First of all, I would never communicate with you guys that way. You will not find out through some app that you've won anything from me. I will announce that on video. If I have an email address for you guys, I will email you personally. So you guys be aware of that. All right, let's get back to work on this guitar. I am super anxious to get this thing done, and we're close enough now that I really don't think it's going to take too long. I use 10 through 46s on this guitar. This is a bone nut. <sighs> oh, that is about perfect right there, you guys. I love these Hosco nut files. I'm so glad I sprung for the good ones. And you guys, I mean, uh, there's a lot of videos out there on how to cut a nut uh, properly. And I can pretty much tell you, I don't do it properly. Um, I have not done this that often. I've worked on a bunch of guitar nuts throughout the course of my life. But as far as making one from scratch, this is only like the fifth one I've done, and the first three were practice nuts. I say we go ahead and get this pickup soldered up. On this guitar, we've got a ground wire, one pickup wire from our P90, which is a two conductor. So that's not too hard to figure out. We also need to mark out and install our jack which I've got our jack right here. This is a Switchcraft standard mono jack, and I've got a vintage Forge chrome football jack plate. Um, I'm a fan of the vintage Forge hardware. It's nicely made. The coating is, I would say, on par with the Goto. Anyway, let me get set up with the soldering iron and um, I'll dig up a wiring diagram, which I don't really have to have for this, but I always follow a diagram. I'm going to shield the inside of this cavity. We'll sit it on the stand over there. While the guitar is over on the stand drying, we'll move and work on the back cover for a little while. I'll shield it. By that time, the shielding paint should be dry enough for us to at least wire this guitar up. Let's get that done real quick. I use easy slide graphite base coating 
in the U.S., with the exception of California, this is available at Tractor Supply for about 20 bucks for a quart of this stuff. I want a nice, even coat of this in here. We're creating a Faraday cage is what we're doing. This stuff dries really quick, too, which is another good thing about it. All right, I'm going to set that to the side. We're going to move the guitar over here on the stand while we work on this cover and just run this sander over this a couple of times. And that's pretty much all we needed. That is some beautiful curly walnut. This came from the same piece that the top was made from. I got some 320 grit on this block right here. To make sure we take care of any little swirlies that may have been left by the random orbit sander. I don't see any. But they'll show up. We'll go for the crimson penetrating guitar finishing oil. And I'm just going to use a paper towel. We will continuously wipe this stuff on here until it starts to puddle. Oh yeah. This is pretty open grain, so I'm going to pour it to it, you know. All right, we'll let that sit for a few minutes, and then I'll buff that back, what's not absorbed anyway. Then we'll wipe a couple of coats of Crimson High Build guitar finishing oil on this thing. And it's already pretty much absorbed it. Let's just go straight to this stuff. I'm just going to drizzle some across here. That should be more than enough. I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes. We'll buff this back and shield it real quick. I'll be right back, you guys. I had to run a couple of errands with my wife. I'm back now. We're ready to get back rolling. It's been about an hour, hour and a half since I was last down here, and we got that shielding paint brushed in this cavity. Let's get these potentiometers put back in. We'll get the knobs installed. Actually, we'll probably solder this up before we put the knobs back on. But I'm going to go ahead and solder this up. Then we'll do this nut work down here. We'll get the jack installed. We'll be ready for a sound demo, you guys. It's not going to be long. Usually use a 250K pot for single coils, 500K for humbuckers. And then, as far as your tone capacitor goes, all that comes down to personal taste. I'm going to go with a 33 microfarad tone capacitor on this guitar. Mainly because this is a P90. And I feel like the 33 falling in the middle of the frequency spectrum, at least between a 22 and a 47 microfarad capacitor, I feel like that 33 is going to give us a nice blending of bright and warm or bright and dark, every how you want to look at it. If we wind up putting this 33 in here, and I notice that too many of the high mids around that, that two to eight K range on the frequency spectrum, if too much of that gets gone and it starts sucking the high mids out of the, out of the tone, we may go to a 22 or a 47. We'll have to experiment. I got a feeling a 33 is gonna be a good choice for a P90. We're going to find out. I'm not putting a treble bleed circuit in this guitar. I happen to know that the player that's going to wind up with this thing, my friend, the Doc, he's not going to be doing any volume swells or anything like that. He's probably going to be a set it and forget it kind of guy. He's not going to be messing with the tone or the volume knob too much. The reason I wanted to put a tone capacitor on this guitar to start with, so he would have some tonal variation on this guitar, in case he decided to start jamming with other people or whatever. I am so glad that those recesses on those holes ended up right after all was said and done. Because they're pretty much perfect as far as depth goes. I've got just enough of the potentiometer sticking up through this top that I can get uh, three or four thread bites 
We're going to leave the ground wire alone for now because I know I'm going to have more than one wire to run to ground and I don't like heating the pot up, letting it cool, heating the pot up, letting it cool. All right, let's take a piece of shrink tube. I want this to look all nice and dressed and everything down in here. I bought some new shrink tubing. This is 332nds marine grade adhesive lined waterproof shrink tubing. Shrink that tube down. I'm using a 33 microfarad Mallory mustard capacitor. I get these from WD Music. Some people like orange drops, and I do. I mean, I got no problem with those. But I've had really good luck with these Mallory mustard capacitors, and WD Music has these for a really good price, so that's what I get. I like to touch the capacitor as I'm soldering it in. If it gets too hot for me to hold my finger on it, I cut it loose, get a new capacitor. Jack installed, nice. Let's get these holes popped in this cover and then we will flip this guitar over and finish off that nut. And four. Now what I'll do is go to a smaller bit. Okay, there's my cavity not the cleanest work I've done but it's nice and straight down in there let's get these screws installed all right now hopefully that cover won't have to come off for years I at least hope it does not have to come back off before it leaves our shop there's our back cover nice i love it got a little block of wood right here with 320 grit sandpaper on it a little bit more i'm going to put a new piece of sandpaper on here i'm going to roll these sharp corners off as well this has got 400 grit on it Let's take a couple of spots of super glue. We'll use medium star bond. And I'm just gonna put a couple of drops down in the bottom of this nut slot. One there, one there. I don't want much, just enough to hold it in place. Just like so. We'll give that a second just to dry. All right, let's take our super fine fret rubber. Regular slinky, 10 through 46. All right, we're almost done, you guys. Here comes the B string. On the B and the high E, a double wrap. I've done that since the late 80s. Double wrap the B in the high E. Let's get these knobs put back on here. And we'll stretch these strings out. I'll run up to the house and get the amp. And we'll plug this thing in after we install these strap buttons, of course. I've been working on setting the intonation and all that stuff. I didn't want to film all that because it's a lengthy process and I didn't really want to go through a tutorial on how to set intonation on this guitar. It's my first wraparound bridge install and I've set intonation on a wraparound bridge before but never on a Goto. 
surprisingly enough, and I'm having a hard time believing this, but I've checked it multiple times, the only adjustment I had to make on this thing is I had to elongate or move the saddle away from the nut on my low E. Every other string on this thing is intonated perfectly from open to the 12th fret, which tells me that I got super, super lucky when it comes to making the nut, placing the frets, and marking out my scale length line. That's luck, you guys. That is not anything I planned. I fully expected to have to utilize the full travel of the saddles on this guitar. Ultimately, what that means, if you don't have to make too many intonation adjustments, is that you've got the same distance from the leading edge of your nut to the 12th fret that you do from the 12th fret to the point of your scale length line that the saddle's riding on. This thing has been such a lesson teacher for me, you guys. I love this guitar, and I have learned so much about guitar building from making this thing. Um, it took me a long time to make. I started this guitar in March. All in all, and I've tried to figure this up as close as I can, I think I've got about 100 working hours into this guitar alone. I have ended up loving this guitar. This thing weighs seven and a half pounds with hardware. I've got nice beefy hardware on here too. The bridge is a Godo wraparound bridge. Uh, this is actually a custom wound P90 that my buddy Mike from ASA Guitars sent me. I'm not sure who made the pickup. He just told me he was having some pickups prototyped and this is one of the ones he sent me in the box. I wanted to use a special pickup on this guitar, and this is a one-of-a-kind P90. It's coming in at about 8.7K. It is a bridge pickup, so it is straight wound. It's not reverse wound or anything like that. I've used two Borns Low Friction 250K pots in this thing. They are both linear taper. There's no treble bleed circuit. There's nothing funky done about the wiring. I used Geiger locking 3x3 three three tuners because I love these pearl buttons. They're not obtrusive. These tuners fit in the size of basically like a shale or mini. And I like them. They're really stable tuners. They're 18 to 1 tuning ratio. This is a 9-piece multi-laminate neck maple myrtle Murado, and then I've got Wingate veneer separating that, and there's some light Anna Gray veneer in there as well. You can see I've got a volute carved in here. I've got a book matched curly walnut cap with my astrolabe holes in there. Custom sweet tea headstock, bone nut that I hand shaped and slotted. It worked out so killer. That's only the second nut I've ever installed on a guitar um, as far as a nut that I made. And it worked out really good, especially knowing the intonation wound up being that tight. And I've gone back and forth on this on a couple of videos, but I actually measured these frets. These frets are Sintoms, 2.4 millimeter wide, 1.4 millimeter tall, 18% nickel silver, they're extra hard nickel silver frets. They're my preferred frets here. I used two control knobs chrome with a clear indicator right there. I got those from WD Music. We got another book matched walnut cavity cover back here. That was also cut from the same piece of wood that the top was made from. I've got a thick uh, vintage forge football plate on the side with the Switchcraft mono jack in the side of it. It's all Gavit cloth covered wire. Um, I'm currently strung up with um, Ernie Ball regular slinkies, uh, 10 through 46. I copied over the Astrolabe design 
on these holes, which is, you know, I thought that was appropriate to call these the astrolabe holes to match the headstock. I thought that was really cool. Um, the body is a multi-piece mahogany, white maple, curly maple, separated by wingate and light anagray veneer. I'm calling that neck joint right there the Sweet Tea Unity neck joint because it is unified <laughs> with the body. That is one of the most comfortable neck joints I have ever played in my life. And I'm not just saying that because I made it. I did the same neck joint on the Cloud9 build, which is my entry for the great guitar build off this year. And that's what I ended up calling that neck joint. It's carved, beveled in with the back. I smoothed all this out right here. We've got this two-piece book match. Beautiful walnut top here. I can't thank Cyril at C. Jacobs Woods enough. He has been so kind to me. And he has hooked me up. I mean, you look at that right there. That is a rare piece of clean walnut right there. I also used an alder subtop on this guitar. That's what that light band is right there. Alder super lightweight. I thought about using maple, but I did not want to add the weight that maple would have added if I would have used it. We got to get the strap buttons installed. Then we're going to do a sound demo. I'm going to wrap this video up. I got other guitars I need to be building. So let's get these strap buttons installed. I'm going to use a one and a half millimeter drill bit on this because I want these strap button screws. To, I want these things to hold. I'm not using strap locks on this guitar or anything. I'm using Klusen California custom buttons. Those are my preferred strap buttons at this point. And here's the strap buttons I like. These are slightly larger than a standard, like a Gibson or even a Fender style strap button. And there we go. You guys, I have almost impressed myself with this one. This is my eighth scratch build ever. I've done a bunch of kits in my life. I've done a ton of repairs. Between this and the Cloud9 guitar that I just built for the great guitar build off, those are two of my favorite guitars ever, not just ones that I've built. But the Cloud9, I love that guitar so much. I mean, it's a rock and roll machine. This guitar is more jazz, you know? I mean, it's funky. Don't get me wrong. I wanted this guitar funky. But I think a jazz player would really love this guitar, especially considering the fact it's got one P90. I have no idea how this thing's going to sound. I've been playing around on it, but I have not plugged it into the amp yet, so I don't even know if the pickup's going to work. Let's do a sound demo and get this wrapped up so I can release this video tomorrow, hopefully before the live stream at Crimson. Let me get the amp set up, get everything ready. We'll film a sound demo. We'll talk a bit more after I'm done with that, and we'll wrap this video up, you guys. All right, you guys, finally. We're about to put her through her paces a little bit, um, as much as I'm able to anyway. So I'm going to start off on a jazz chorus channel. I got the volume and the tone wide open. I'm not going to mess too much with those. I'll do my usual thing, play through some chords. We'll end up with some heavy distortion. See what this P90 will do, uh, cranking some metal through it. But first, let's see what it sounds like in that tonal range that this guitar was meant to be played in. Little chorus, just a little bit of reverb. Too much chorus. It's chunky, it's smacky, it's spanky. It almost has a little bit of a strat quality to it, I think. It's, it's beautiful, it's got a great sound to it. I, I love a P90 anyway. 
Let's crank this thing up a little bit. What do you want out of a guitar? You know, for this thing to be a single pickup, P90, as far as that pickup is away from that bridge, and to still get that kind of clarity and that high-end reproduction, I'm super impressed with this pickup. All right, you guys, we're gonna wrap this video up right here. I am so happy with how this guitar has turned out. I'm really hoping the doc's gonna love this thing. One last look at the Astrolabe 25, you guys, before it goes off to its new owner. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you don't mind. Um, hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date as to where I'm at on any future project I got going on. You guys know that I've already announced the next giveaway bill that I'll be starting into January 1st of February. I'm also about to start a collaboration with Gio from Tornelli Guitars in Italy where we will both build our versions of an ultimate strat. I cannot wait to get started on that guitar. Before I do that, however, I am going to finish up the 7 of 9 build. I'm going to shoot one more video on the 7 of 9. We'll do pretty much what we just did with the Astrolabe. We'll go through, do a sound demo. I'll show you guys the guitar in its final state and what it took to get me to that point. So I hope you guys will keep coming back to the channel. Throw me a like if you don't mind. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about the channel. As always, you guys, until the next video, peace and love.